Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Let's ring Ron Lyle, see what he's up to. How are you doing, uh, Big Ron Lyle, aka Dennis Hobson? You alright? Yeah, you know, I'll just tell it as it is, darling. If people got a problem, they can come and see me, can't they? So you're all right then, apart from this epidemic thing? Yeah, it's uh, not good, is it? No, it's uh, surreal times like living in the movie, isn't it? Oof. I mean, did you, did you hear what Peter had to say about it? You know, with all these people going to shops and all this, and yeah. he was raging the other morning. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously looking out, he's got his mum living with him, man, and Peter, so, you know, it's, yeah. it's worrying times, isn't it? It's uh, it's Yeah, it's, uh, do you think they're not telling us everything, Dan? Many, many more 
cases than us, but we've got many, many more people dying of this virus on statistics. So what is it in Germany? Is it because they aren't got their healthier, or their healthier uh, race, or have they got a better health system than the rest of Europe? And I, I, I would suggest it's probably the latter. They've probably got the best health care in in, uh, in Europe and if not the world, and that's why they cope them with it's better than others, and that's why they might have seen as many people die. Uh, um, because, um, may not be Germany, look after Germany. And, uh, and that's what I'm saying, Pol we are getting to politics. We should have been doing the same medicine stronger health-wise as healthcare-wise instead of trying to look after everybody. We've got to make sure we look after our own. We've got to make sure like, we, we have a system where uh, it's not abused and then the, and it's, it's a strong health system. And then when we do get times like this, we can call it a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not good, is it, Dan? But let's just hope that everybody gets... Uh, isolated and looks after themselves. Right, I've got a few questions here. Well, you know, it makes you appreciate, you know, what we get, what we take for granted in life, just being able to walk down the street, walk to the shop, oh. go in the parks, yeah. watch us football. You know, we, we take so much for granted these days. And, you know, it, is, it, is it, unless it is man-made, is it somebody, some more I am uh, uh, correcting us and saying, hold on a minute, you've got to carry away with yourselves. Uh, and this is the uh, this is what you're going to opt for. This this is the price to pay. So, yeah. And hopefully we come we come out of this. We're not looking too many people, and uh, and we appreciate everything. You know the, the the basics in life. So hopefully, anyway, let's see. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, it's not good, mate. It's not good, is it? But let's hope for fingers crossed. We all get through it, eh? Right, I've got some questions here for you then, just 10 boxing questions, uh, and you're always a good interview, probably because I've known you for years, but, right, here we go, Dennis, testing times ahead for us, how are you coping at the moment, we spoke about that, how are you coping at home with Sarah and kids, is it true you is have, that but, from you, is that from you, because you know me, I'm yeah, no, I, 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 you're jumping in, Ron, 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 no, I said, how are you coping at all? And then I've and then I've put, is it true you have bought a lawnmower to sit on, or is Clinton Woods restarting Woods landscaping up? So you're just pottering about at home then, Dan. Tommy Frank, world title shot, put on hold. How's he coping and how are you coping with, with changes and that? So, he's going to 
be at least I think September before we get this on. I think so. And yeah. then uh, and hopefully it is in September. Hopefully we get sanctions and everything left as, as we go to this virus in the next couple of months. But I don't know. It might take three months at least. I think. Uh, but, uh, I think we've just got to see. See that these uh, days, yeah, we've already got this long and this last few days. So uh, we're, we're all going to be still crazy, but. Uh, Mm. What with my experience of being locked up, <laughs> yeah, I'm coping. Well, I'm coping better than you. What sort of jobs are you going to get? What sort of you want? You cope better than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I'm used to grafting every day. <laughs> I'm used to grafting. I'm not used to just sat on my bed, just giving it plenty of verbal. I'm out here trying to put things together and help people. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for. Yeah, I'm still here. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Dennis. We'll move on, shall we? After you just slagged me to death. Listen, mate. I've got some questions lined up for you later on, so I'll get ready. Right, right then. What, what? What's happening with Josh Whale, Dennis? What? What's? What we're doing with him? Signings on the horizon now. You've got your mojo back. It's, a, it's, it's better times for us with boxing than five years ago, isn't it? Uh, and that's why it's so litigious. 
because people renege on contracts and even right at the top we are mentioning names people renege because they think they can get away with it and it tests your resolve financially and legally and uh, uh, just just to get away with things that they knew they were never going to honour in the third place so it's just a cutthroat business but you live for the big night you live for getting that success and going and winning a title at whatever level and that's what it's given me in the industry because I, I, love, I love the buzz of you know getting a kid to a the pinnacle or to, to win something at whatever level he can win at yeah it's uh, yeah you've done well do you, do you see any casualties, Dennis, in the next few months, you know, people in boxing industry, boxers, managers? Well, I, I, I think so, because, um, you know, people just live for today and they, they want the glory days and they don't think about the rainy days and thankfully I'm like a, a few, you know, like I mentioned, speak wood and one or two other people in the industry, probably Goodwin and people like Mick that. Mick Hennessy. Who's got substance behind them, but I think there'll be a few fighters who have to retire and go back to work because... They relied on the boxing money to keep them going, and, and so they might have to just, you know, think about retiring from boxing and, and getting a full-time job, which, which will be a dream. Because I think a few people will pull out of boxing. There might be some promoters out there who can't sustain anything because they, they haven't got a business. They just, they just got the boxing world. Um, and you know, just going on to what I just said earlier, you know, out and out business people, but because they've got an inside. Uh, knowledge of boxing to a degree that they might be create a business even though they're not business people uh, and it's them what's going to struggle uh, um, so I think it, there will be a few casualties I think because to, you know what do they what they do apart from the boxing you know they, they, they haven't got any other, other talents uh, they haven't got any entrepreneurism they haven't got a, they haven't got a, a trade some of these kids so they're going to struggle a few. So I think there'll be a bit of a shake-up in boxing once we come through this in the next few months. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, where do you see Richard Towers uh, in two years with Cash Alley, Dennis? Where do you think these boys are going to be? Think they're going to be challenging for titles? I, I, I like to think so. I think talent-wise, yeah. I think uh, there's, there's still a mentality uh, uh, that we do. Richard's working on with him uh, with, with Cash. I think talent-wise, it can be it can be up there in, in the top ten, if not higher in, in, in Britain. I'd like to see him in the hopefully in the top six in Britain. Uh, and then we're in the mix for some big fights. I think he's got the talent to do it. Um, and and we're just working on the whole package. Uh, from me, he's come on so much. He's really got his head down, but you know there's still a bit of work to do. So the jury's still out. He's just got to you know get get rid of a few ghosts. Uh, and uh, and I, like I say, I, I think he's he's the talented kid. He's cash. I really like him. I think Rich is doing an amazing job with him. And um, with him at the side, him and with me at the side of him, I think we're a smashing team, and that's why we can achieve. Uh, Steve Crook's done a, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's done a nice job about helping him with the, with his sponsorship and and so he can he, can, he does not he doesn't have to worry about himself, you know, paying his bills every week and and uh, and we're, me and Steve print uh, like shows he can box on and you know, further his career and we're going to get him in some eliminators and whatever. So we'll plot a path for him in the next few months. It's just that. Glad we've been up here, and uh, it's just a shame. Yeah, it's uh, they say he sailed them up because they were they were on the way, weren't they? They had a couple of win uh, outings and a couple of wins, Cash and Richard, aren't they? And they've just hit a brick wall, aren't they? Yeah, uh, it's for everything now, but we're, we're still optimistic, Russ. We're still very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, did you tell? Oh, sorry, you went on the podcast with Spencer Oliver, didn't pound for pound, Spencer Oliver and Jake Wood. Did you tell them? About the Terry Curran Greyhound story. No, I didn't. I think some of these questions are just from you, not not from some of your listeners. Baby, you ain't it. I said, "What should I pretend to ask you now?" What I I'm asking. I wrote them down. More. Dennis. From Swansea, is this one? Go on. I wrote. I sent you the list. What I've wrote down. I said I'll send you. We'll call it Ten Count with Den. Ten count with den, den we'll call it. Ten questions. We're up. Ten count with den, den. Go on, then. It only took me fifteen minutes to knock this up. Right, 
Do you, oh, we spoke about casualties. Like, did you know English amateur boxing have cancelled all amateur shows till October? I didn't, I didn't, but you know, that shows how serious you can take it. It's yeah. been taken, so I think, I think they're doing it right. I think, uh, you know, the, the government's finding all sorts of funding for, for everybody, and rightly so. Uh, and we're all in this together. There's a few people who's not going to adhere to it, and, uh, and they're going to put other people at, at, at risk. Uh, I wish everybody would do the same, but you know, we've got a police. Uh, force and, and, and they're saying they're only going to get uh, they haven't got the resources well, they always say that well there's not as many people on the streets to police and they haven't got to catch as many people speeding in because there's 80% people less on the road so they don't need they're not needed there so they don't need as many resources for that they, need to, they just need to jump on the resources to police people not gather in, in large gatherings and if there's religious people or if there's people uh, just congregating need to space them out and tell them that they've got a they've got a person so you know people use these situations to their own benefit i don't think i mean i might be wrong Russ, but i don't think that the resources i think the resources can be put onto this because like i said they don't they're not being used for uh, events it's not events. They're not being used because people, not as many people's on the street. So they, they're going down the road and they see somebody, they can do kind of go, hold on a minute, should they be there? So, they, you know, it's not as though we, we're packed. Most people are, are, are adhering to this, 80% of people are adhering to this. So there should be a lot less activity for the police uh, in, in, in life for the, for the normal, you know, life. With, there won't be as many cars getting. Uh, crashing because there's not a many cars on the road. Uh, uh, there won't be as many people breaking the law. Uh, well, <laughs> some, some obviously will do this as, a, as, a, as an ideal situation, but there won't be as many petty people because like, there won't, there's not as many tea leaves in the jobs, shop, shop lifters. Uh, so they aren't going to use the resources on all the shop lifters. So, I'm out there. do you agree with me on that, Russ? Yeah, yeah, I. Uh... I, I don't think there's many people out and about. I just think that uh, a lot of people maybe didn't take it serious at first and couldn't accept it. I think because we've been told that many lies by politicians, we just nobody's got any faith in them, have they? That's true. We have, don't we? Have yeah, but I, I, I like Boris. I think he's, you know, I think he's trying his best, and uh, he's he's under advice from from the health uh, people and uh, in, on how to play it. Uh, but I, I do like his positivity. Uh, I mean, I'll stick my neck out, I like, I like Donald Trump, I won't like him to live next door to me because I think he's an addict and so on and so on. But, as a businessman, uh, I'd like him running my business, but, but as, a, as my next door neighbour, I won't like him living next door to me. But he says it as it is, uh, he's a bit near to the bone, but he's not, a, he's not politically correct and, and he does a bit near to the bone. But I think in, in Boris we've got a decent fella. Uh, but, most politicians, I wouldn't have them. 90% of the politicians that I wouldn't give them jobs we can mass grab your. We've had them at shows though, haven't we? As guests. Sorry? We've had them at your shows as guests, don't we, politicians? They're only ones with my name in there, but I think so. I've put out what's all the bit of common sense, but majority of them do Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, anyway. like I said, I didn't take, them, take it serious at first, but obviously I am now, because it's, I just think there's stuff they're not telling us, that's all, but that's just me. But anyway, moving on, uh, I'm just going to throw a few names at you here, Clinton Woods, Ricky Atten, David A, Jamie McDonnell, Gavin McDonnell, Carl Thompson, Tommy Frank, Stewie O, Ross Birkinshaw, Josh Wales, Silky Jones, Cash Alley. Just a few names there that you know you've uh, worked at length with. Is is there anybody that you nearly signed and you could have, but you never did, and you thought, you know what, I should have signed him when I had chance. Uh, that's a good question. That. Um, I don't think off the top of my head. Diego Corrales is one I know about, isn't he? You were in for Diego Corrales, weren't you? Uh, 
Oh yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously Diego's uh, passed away, and he God rest his soul. But uh, you, had, you were in Diego Corrales. You were close to getting in, weren't you? Is that a regret for you, Dennis? The uh, is that a regret for for you because you had Ricky Hatton, you never lost a fight with you, and when he got to the the biggest money fight in boxing for many years, uh, you, you weren't involved uh, because of politics behind the scenes. Do you think he shouldn't have took that fight and stayed with you and working with Bob Arum, or? It's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame, but look, look at, look at, look at a positive look what that fella achieved. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, if I could have achieved that half of what he's done, I'd be looking in the mirror and think, thank whatever I'm me. Uh, um, he should be looking at himself and be so proud of himself. But uh, I don't think he has got that in his mentality because obviously, but his mental. Yeah. 